Lecture 15. Just to remind you, this is the final product that we are trying to create here. Going through all these lectures, you might have forgotten. So, so far, we have learned how to get all the picture names from the folder and how to get them into the list box. By using the find command, you can find out which file is a picture and which file is a, a program or folder. Today, I will show you how to place widgets into the main window. In the past, we've used the pack command to pack the widgets into the window. However, there are other ways to organize the widgets. Let me quickly show you an example. In this code, I basically created four widgets and packed them into the window. As you can see, over here I've commented out of two other ways which you can put the widget into the window. Right now, if we run the program using the pack command, it will look something like this. So the widget we created uh, just packed in there, kind of one after another. This is how the pack function work. It packs them. However, sometimes we might want to organize them in a, a different way. A way, maybe one next to, uh, to another or some widget in a very specific location. The first way is pack, which we have been using the whole time, which is also the easiest way. The second way, as you can see, is called a place. This is an extremely powerful, but maybe overkill, way to place them. The way place work is by using the x and y coordinates and place the widget at the specific position. So 0, 0 will be at the top left position, and 1, 0 will be move it a little bit to the right, 100, 0 will move it very far to, to the right. Let me just run this program so you can see it. I'm going to switch uh, all the pack command, comment them out, and use the place command. Check this out. It's going to look rather differently. Let me run it. So, as you can see, the label is placed at 0, 0, just like the code. It says 0, 0, which is top left. The text box is at 30 and 40. This kind of moves a little bit to the right. The button is placed at 20, 20, and you can see for yourself. You can literally place the widget anywhere you want within the window. The last method we have is called the grid method. This, this is a pretty good method. Basically, you just put them into grids. When you have them in, when you have them in grids, it's in good way to organize them. So let me switch all the place commands back to the grids and you will see what I mean. Okay, basically as you can see, you can organize the widgets into grids. You will start with a row equals to zero, a column equals to zero. So the zero zero position is top left and then you can increment the row and the columns to place them anywhere you want so the zeroth row first column zeroth row second column so you can p basically control see them as little grids and put them accordingly I want to note that you can mix the place command with the other two but you do not do not mix the pack and the grid command it will really mess up the program, trust me. Or you can go try it yourself. There are many other options you can use with these three geometric rearrangements. To find out other options, you can read the documentations. I've shown you how to read the documentations. It's about time I stop holding your hands. So I will go to the idle interpreter, import TK inter, and find the documentation for the backpack command. So we know that pack, we're trying to pack a widget. So you will print out the TK inter button, pack, and the documentation. So right now you can read all about it. There are many other options in the pack. In the past, we have add pad x and pad y. It basically adds padding to, to the pack command. Or you can read the tkinter place command 
you also have documentation on that it's TK inter button place documentation with these documentations you'll be able to make minor adjustments to the way you're placing the widgets into the window so that will be very helpful when you want to change the aesthetics of it to make it look prettier just the way you want okay so right now I'm going to have a hundred and eighty degree shift we're going to do something different now that we know how to place the widgets into the window there's one more step to finish our project when we click on the list box we need to know what we clicked on with this I'm going to show you another example code in this program just like what we've seen in the past it's pretty self-explanatory we create a window we create a list we create uh, we use the for loop to put everything from the list into the list box we then pack the widget into the window at this point you notice that there's an extra command the list bind double button one press list in this function is referring to the list box as you can see from here the box that we will be clicking on double means double click and button one is the left mouse button the left mouse button so if you change that to button two is the middle button and button three is the right button basically we're binding the actions of the double click in to the list box so when we double click we'll call the function press there are also other options besides double clicking on the left mouse button over here I have a list of bindings and descriptions of what you can do with them I will include this PDF file in my our media site they all essentially call a function when an event occurs and we have different events over here we have the enter key so when you press enter something else will happen it calls a function or if you can I don't know do basically you have a lot of options so check this out I'm sure we'll cover it later in the future the, the different ones in this list okay so once we have pressed on the list box we'll go to the function press let's check out the function press okay over here first and most importantly we want to find out what which option we clicked on so I use the cursor selection command you can find this command in the documentation it basically gives you the number that tells you which one you have clicked on so if you click on the first one it will give you zero if you click on the second one it will give you one click on the third one it will give you two basically one down because I don't know why they start with zero in the code right here I will print out the number so after that we need to get the actual string so I use the get command I basically put in the number from um, the number corresponding to the list box and then it will get for me the string after that I also print out the string it's much easier to understand this when you run the program so let me run it okay as you can see when I click on the first option you will print out zero first and the string that corresponding to the click I can click on any of them and they'll do the same thing this is how you would get the name that the user clicked on from this point on I have taught you all the tools to program the actual project I'm not gonna do it here because well I have the source code for you so you can see it also I want you to do it for your homework so if you have problems you can always check out the homework try to combine all the concepts I've taught you in the last several lectures and try to program it yourself if you can do all these you would have learned a lot and I'll be very proud so this is the end of this project thank you for learning we'll do some more exciting things next project uh, we'll end the class early today this is Che until next time